Hi, uh, I'm Tycho. I work at Netflix on the compute platform there. Um, and today I want to talk about uh, some questions that containers often have to answer, like uh, how many CPUs do I have? Um, the goal of this is to come away with a decision about where the code to answer this question lives. So as I'm explaining this, uh, just think about how you would want to query this information. Um, so first uh, question is like, why do people care about this? And uh, often uh, we found that people care about this to size uh, thread pools. Like if you have access to 48 cores, you want to run 48 threads so you can do 48 different things, one on each core. Or um, fancy threaded allocators like uh, TC Malloc from Google out have a different arena so they don't have to lock across threads when they're doing their reallocation. So they want to know how many threads am I going to have so that you know, I can have that many arenas. Um, so that's sort of why people care. Uh, so there's lots of ways to do this. And I'm, here I'm only talking about CPUs, but actually the situation is even more complicated for memory um, because there's all sorts of NUMA stuff and you can set that in C groups or schedulers, whatever. But so there's kernel, um, uh, kernel command line parameters you can use. You can set things. Uh, you can query these in a few different ways. You can look at proc stat, proc C CPU info. There's some uh, code uh, written by a bunch of people in this room called LXCFS that uh, masks those things so they look appropriate. But if you look at various other files, you know you can see kind of the real story. Sys info. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Sked get affinity. Um, you know, it's a system call that again might tell you the wrong thing actually we patched that up using seccomp user notify at netflix so that we don't have this problem so do um, we yeah uh but you know there's a lot of uh missing things here like if you apply quotas to limits or whatever um that won't necessarily be reflected uh your affinity if you have some quota is really all cpus even though if you allocate in a memory uh, an arena for each cpu you may do still dumb things there. And then there's new things called SCEDEX. And so then, you know, user space is going to get to define this policy. So then you need somebody to. And in any event, for, I mean, there's some weird trickery we do. I mean, like CFS, for example, for CFS, we actually do support it. Mm -hmm. We're like, if you put a CFS limit of like 800 out of 100, then we're like, oh, eight CPUs. And we'll just like truncate the first eight CPUs out of CPU info. And there you go. Yeah. No guarantee it's even remotely correct. It might not be the right CPUs at all. Like it could be on like a big little system and we just like show you the big cores when you actually pin on the, we're actually gonna be scheduled on the small ones. Who knows? But it's, it's yeah. So speaking of correctness, here's a list of ways that people have screwed this up uh, <laughs> that we have found. Um, so I, I'm not gonna go through all this, but I have some links here to various bugs. Uh, the, I guess the, uh, the third bullet here by the glibc people is, you know, why, don't, uh, why doesn't the kernel tell us the real answer to this question? Which is, you know, maybe a reasonable thing that the kernel should add an endpoint for this, but actually you can figure it out from user space if you write the code correctly. Uh, it's just clearly very hard to, to do that. Um, and notably, I mentioned this project, LXCFS, uh, earlier that was written by people in this room, and even we fucked it up. And there's two bugs for, for us, too. So uh, this, is, this is hard to answer, and so I guess the, the goal of this is we should write some code that lives somewhere that can answer this for people so that everyone can just ask this code. And the question is, where should that live? Uh, so keep that question in your mind. Uh, so you know, nowhere, we just keep screwing it up. Everybody has their own implementation. That's the status quo. Maybe we put it in the container runtime, like LXCFS style, you know, the kernel. Maybe, maybe uh, they won't get excited about that. And then SCEDEX, again, like, the kernel can't tell you what the SCEDEX policy is going to be. So when that lands, this is going to get much more gnarly. Um, so again, my conclusion here is uh, this probably should live in user space. Um, so there's a few different options. Um, so I want to compare them. Yeah, I talked about some prior art. Uh, mostly this is the, the key slide about comparing and contrasting. So. The two um, options are do it uh, via IPC, so the code would live in system B, likely PID1. I've talked to Leonard about this at length, and so if people are angry, I can try and explain what exactly his position is on this. Um, but the problem with this, of course, is you have to have system D running somewhere. Um, and the question is where, 
uh, at least in Netflix, not all of our containers run systemd. Actually, only about half of them do. Some of them are traditional application containers, but some of them are systemd containers. Um, you know, you could implement this multiple times if you had different, uh, you know, uh, pluggable things or whatever, or your container runtime wanted to implement it slightly differently. Uh, I filed a systemd RFE about this maybe six months ago, and um, we hasn't really gotten any traction besides some conversations. Oh, there's the man himself. I don't have to misrepresent him. Um, so <laughs> the other option is a, a library. Uh, and um, so the, in principle, I like the library better because, you know, the kernel does give you all of the endpoints you need. You just need to get it right. People can link against it on their own. They don't need, there doesn't need to be another daemon uh, somewhere to talk to. Um, but, you know, the problem is how do you, how do you get everybody, like, these are like the JVM, TC Malik, all these people, these people do not want to add a dependency. But they probably do have a JSON parser handy. So in their, in like their standard library supports AF Unix and stuff. So um, it's maybe easier to get people to talk to systemd instead of doing it via a library. Um, I think here is where we begin the arguments. Uh, I think after my discussions with Leonard, I'm more and more convinced that this should be IPC <coughs> because it's unclear if you can always figure this out from the right sysfs files, proc command line, you know, can you query, I guess one question is like, can, and I don't know the answer to this, but like if you have a NUMA policy that you've uh, applied directly to the scheduler via the, the, whatever the fancy syscalls are, can somebody else figure that out on your behalf? If they can't, then IPC won't work, and it has to be a library. Um, so, thoughts? Yeah, I mean, the, so the the initial thing is kind of who would be the top user, and you said you know the runtimes and those kind of applications. And one obvious issue there with the IPC is uh, the majority of application containers don't use systemd. Um, so, and that's where that's the top user as far as needing that information. So no, that doesn't mean that doesn't mean that's an I, that IPC is not necessarily the right answer. It might just not be answered by systemd. Um, so one one thought I have is you're probably running systemd on the host, and so you can bind it all the way through. Mm -hmm. And um, this is some argument that we've had where you probably have to put a big comment at the top of the API that says, like, hey, there's like a time of check, time of use problem here. If your container is manipulating the C groups or whatever. Like systemd will only tell you, you know, what you have right mm -hmm. now, and it won't tell you, um, you know, if somebody mm -hmm. changes it out from under you, that's your problem. I think that's mm -hmm. fine because, like, largely nobody actually does that. Like, they put you in a C group and then start you and then run you, so it's okay. Um, but, you know, there is like a theoretically a problem. So yeah, that was my understanding of things that uh, you know IPC doesn't mean it need, would be like strictly in a system uh, D uh, IPC that exposes system D in in every way. Um, the idea would be that it would be basically just a socket somewhere in the file system and you can mount it through. And yes, so it's going to be implemented by systemd in many cases, but it could also be implemented by somebody else uh, if they feel like it. Um, uh, uh, it would be totally generic and not ooze the system D stench uh, uh, <laughs> from the from the function description, and uh, I don't know, I would always use wildling for this simply because that's what we do in systemd world, but that is no, 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 uh, like, has no effect on the, on the IPC, it's just one choice of many possible. Yeah, I think, I mean, that's, that's, that's fashion around, like, you know, we, we would want, like, like something needs to run to answer to that to that Unix socket if it's not the systemd service that's perfectly fine, and then we need to expose it to the container or to whatever the environment is. Like initially, it was like, oh, you you know, Unix, uh, abstract Unix sockets are fun for that because you don't need a spot on the file system. Mm -hmm. Problem is you can't bind bound them, which is a bit annoying. So in this case, actually being able to to have to have a straight up like standard location bind bound the thing in, and then the whatever software can easily check that that be. That would help. Uh, there was a question there, and then a question there, and then a question two there. Questions, yeah, three. <laughs> uh, hi. So uh, this uh, is a recurring topic, I think, and uh, I want to remark that uh, yeah, the resources inside container are not the same like the resources on the physical machine because they are share shared. So you don't know how much actually you have of that. 
So the ideologically correct answer to that is to use PSI metrics that uh, like resolve many issues that you raised. And like pragmatic answer, I don't know what is the solution. Is. There is also, because not always you have systemd, I think that Kubernetes has some special file system that it uh, bind mounts inside the containers so they can r check what is the environment, but that's Kubernetes specific. So but, like, from the research perspective that at least are managed by C group, so you can get that information from PSI, but it's like a very different concept from how people are used to read the resources. I think it's actually okay uh, to use PSI or to choose, like even to let an uh, operator choose which, which metric they want to use. It's like in my view, it's more about like, can we get all the container runtimes to ask yeah. one person so that then we can swap it well, out as operators. Behind and I think the other thing too is kind of what the API should be. Is it like, should it be like describe all of the resources that you have or should it be how many threads should I be spawning? Because um, if it's a higher level thing of like, hey, I'm about to do concurrent stuff, like what the optimal number of, of, of threads of processes should be spawning, that's a more useful question that we can answer than based on PSI or based on some other things. Instead of like straight up like, okay, well, you've got a CPU set that large, that's that many you can do, um, which might be a lie. Uh, just gonna keep going with the, yeah, the, the queue, it's back there. Yeah. Yeah. And then back to Matthew and then back to Linux. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, PSI is definitely not enough because, for example, for the JE malloc, which is something I was messing with just recently, needs to know the number of cores. And for networking applications, you might get wilder queries like how many network queues I have and to which CPUs they are bound and blah, blah, blah. Depends on how wild you want to go with the API. Uh, anyway, my main point is something else. I think that the library versus IPC is not either or, but you can have both because you can have library and then this, for example, systemd can expose the same information via IPC. So the normal applications which don't care that much will use whatever is available and the applications which absolutely depend on the correct configuration will just, you know, pull in the library as a dependency because they just have to have the right information. Yeah, so so I agree it's not either or, but I don't want to write this code twice. So the question is, would you be willing to link against libsystemd or something like it in order to get this information? Yep, yeah, he has an answer. All right. <laughs> What's um, your answer? I'll just say it in the microphone. Yeah, well, I think that you don't have to re-implement, right? The system you can link to the library and expose it. And if it's, if it's the, for example, the same text protocol as we have for system as you notify, I just speak with Unix socket and I don't need any mechanism. Yeah. Uh, coming from a kernel perspective, I don't really care how you guys choose to move the information around in user space. What is it that you want to see? So I, I can make a guess here. Having some limit on the maximum number of CPUs that could be used by a container, and that's a coming talk that I'm going to actually discuss that. Yep. The other part might be also to have an idea of the aggregate, the union of all the CPU ma uh, allowed CPU mask of all the threads within a container. Mm -hmm. So if you have that aggregated CPU mask, then you might be able to have some information about what you are currently using on the system independently of the limits that were configured. So I think you're right, like in, in the, in the fullness of time when we start doing this and it all works well, like we will want to get that advanced. But like I say, given the bugs, like. I, I think the bugs are an effect of not having the right information given to you by the kernel ABIs. So you're arguing that you should tell us. Yep. Okay, great. <laughs> <laughs> I, I mean, and this, is, this is the exact opposite argument uh, that was had for many years. So yeah, I'm, gl yeah. I'm glad that the, the opinion has changed on that because, yeah, because I mean, like, the, the reason why proc CPU info and proc mem info, just for example, is why they're wrong is because the argument was like, no, we can't change them. We can, no, we can't bind that to C groups and so on. So you're saying we, 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 should, we should do that. No, <laughs> Yeah, I, I don't want to hijack the discussion here. I have one, it's a my own session point, coming. Actually. Yeah. <laughs> But I mean, uh, my idea is uh, perhaps the CPU C group might be a good place to hold that information, right? Currently you have a choice, uh, CPU sets or CPU C group. CPU C group does not limit the number of concurrent CPU at all. 
maybe it should. Upcoming topic, right? But then if you look at, so what you want to do is query information. So having some kind of bound that you can query, what's my actual hard max number, right? Uh, that would be useful. Uh, and having the CPU-C group track this aggregation of allowed CPU masks uh, within the C group might be useful as well. And I have ideas on how to implement that within the kernel. Okay, so this is good. Um, I like this better than all of the things that we've previously talked about, so I appreciate, thank you for it, because I just assumed that the answer was definitely gonna be no, which is why I started down this road. Um, yeah, yeah, we, um, I, uh, like the affinity things, like I, I don't think user space really is prepared to like uh, handle changing affinities. Like if you look at like TC Malloc, they're like a, they're, they have like a static list of pointers to arenas, the TC Malloc application boots up once, asks for its affinity, allocates pointers in that array, and the ones that are not, you do not currently have affinity for when your application starts, get null, and if you change the affinity, the application will crash. And that's like in, you know, primo threaded allocator by Google. Yeah, so. TC Malloc should start using Postgres. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, okay. I'm, I'm convinced. <laughs> uh, the stuff that I wanted to say, like, I mean, if this is a thing now, then it's probably mostly obsolete what I want, wanted to say, but uh, I'll say it anyway. You know, if the IPC thing is something that it would happen, like, I see it, by the way, as a pattern, right? Like, uh, um, uh, like in system, you're kind of moving toward this valing thing instead of debuzz mostly because we can make this a thing that you can mount through certain functionality from the host by mounting a, a, a AF Unix socket uh, somewhere, right? So uh, from my perspective, this would not be an isolated thing. Um, like for example, uh, uh, we, we have in SystemD now something where you can mount disk images, um, uh, uh, like basically you give an FD for disk image and you get an FD back for a mount. Um, and uh, we want to open this for containers and then uh, the idea would be basically the service already exists and you just bind mount into a container. Um, so, yeah, but yeah, I'm, again, I'm of course. I'm convinced that like, if we were gonna do IPC, like Varlink is probably the way to go. Like, yeah, uh, but uh, I mean, I, I just wanted this pattern of having IPC sockets that we mount through and that the server side then is able to understand who's on the, on the, on the other end, basically. Yeah, yeah, and totally. that's, that basically for every resource, every service that you wanna share, you have one socket that you, um, like as an API defined that you can mount through, that's a pattern that I kind of like and I think want to propagate to other people. But yeah. then again, I personally would also say, uh, if the kernel can do this information, fuck yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> why, why not do zero work instead of some work and have them do yeah. it? Yeah. Just, we, we don't have a good, for instance, we, we, the, the history for the past 10 years has not been us someone getting what we want out of the kernel. Yeah. Uh, and like, I mean, the whole idea of behind this, like, well, we've been fucking around with this stuff for 10 years now. Like, like CFS was like supposed to be a hack 10 years ago and it's still here. And problems that people care about speed now, they find ways around parsing text files using APIs that we can't as easily cover. So it's like, it, we would like to be in a different position in 10 years where like people hopefully stop parsing CPU info directly mm -hmm. um, and, and start doing something a bit smarter. Um, anyway, I think we're out of time. Yeah, by a couple of minutes. Sorry. So thanks a lot. Yeah. Good job.